Okay, part two of the Girona Catalonia series. And this one was challenging for me because it dove into the history of Spain and Catalonia and the independence movement. And so I just, there, there was a lot of extra stuff to do. So, um, but it, I find it's really quite relevant to uh, what we're experiencing, the polarization around the world, particularly in the United States right now. So um, I think it's really important to talk about. And I really want to thank Camilo for um, his knowledge and his willingness to share that on this tour with us and give us different perspectives on how we can think about um, the independence movement, um, the idea of staying unified, and so I hope you find it interesting. Let me know what you think. Contrary to what happened in the medieval ages, which was the frontal battle, the Spanish Civil War has no battle space. It was la guerra total. It means they bombarded everywhere. And Barcelona is one of the most bombarded cities in Europe in history. So what did the people from Girona did? They did, and it's part of their being, passive defense. So they run the alarms, and they gather and they, you know, they hide. Once they lost and there was uh, Franco leading the, the regime, people from Galicia were forbidden to speak Galician. People from the Basque country were forbidden to speak uh, Basque, uh, Esquera. And people from Catalonia were forbidden to speak Catalan. This is why they hide it and only in very small places, with the family, with the people that they know. That is how they, they kept the, the language alive. And it, this is a reason why, and for us visitors can be a shock, they insist on speaking Catalan so much. Because this was once a language that was lost, and they are not trying to regain it. It's part of their identity. Uh, right now, we are here by the side of the flag of Catalonia. You can see it has a yellow background and four red stripes. Uh, there is a legend on the origin of this flag. All of the region of Catalonia was never a kingdom. It belonged to a kingdom, which was the kingdom of Aragon, which extended to what is now Perpignan and, of course, the autonomous community of Aragon. It was the count of Barcelona who controlled all of this. The history is like this, the legend is like this. Was a leader, a king, a military leader that engaged in fights, that normally, normally, he wore a yellow armor and a yellow shield. Was Wilfredo el Bellos, means Wilfred the Hairy. So he was known by that. <laughs> and uh, he was, you know, hurted in battle and the legend says, no, before dying, he grabbed his wound with the, with the blood and then he passed the four fingers through the shield. Oh. And this is the origin of um, the flag of Catalonia, which is the flag of the autonomous community. Oh. What part? They got the inspiration from Puerto Rico. You see the Puerto Rican flag yeah. was also this, this battle between the Anglo-Saxons in the United States and the Latins, let's say, Latin yeah. origin people uh, in the Islands. 
So they got inspired in that and they, they promoted this. And uh, actually there was a, a society, an association in Cuba uh, promoting this. Catalan independence, exact oh, wow. independence oh. of Catalonia. So there is another variation, which is this flag. So you have a red star and a yellow background, sorry. This is for the left politic parties. So instead of having as the Chinese flag, like a red background and a yellow star, they have the opposite. Mm. And as I told you before, there is one that is uh, the black one, you know, a yeah. black background and a white. This is because when the French army, the Bourbons, which is a curiosity, the French army, uh, they were helping conquering this place back. And actually, the current king of Spain, he comes from the French family because he's a Bourbon. Oh, right. So f Spain has a French king, let's say, or a, or a king of a French ascendant. Yeah, yeah. As Russia has uh, kings from, from German ascendants as well. Yeah. They had it before. So when the, the French army was invading uh, Barcelona, you, you raise on the top of the tower a black flag to say, we will not surrender. We will never surrender. We will die. And they surrender. Uh, for commemoration of this, people adapted this to the flag uh, 100 years or so from, from this event. So this is a contradiction because Catalans, they celebrate the 11th of September. And that was the day that Barcelona felt. So they recall all of the time when they, when they lost independence, which is also a claim that they don't forget and that they still want to recover their territory. So it's a little bit of a contradiction to, to remember the lost, but it is also a claim for, for the new things to come that they wish to come. There has been a long debate along the history of um, Spain because uh, following the example of France, they wanted to become a republic. Spain is a parliamentary monarchy right now. That means people from Spain, they still pay taxes, tribute to the king and the king's family, the royal family. This is not necessarily a bad thing because he performs as a public relations and a representative of, of, the, of the state, yeah. but also because it is a figure that goes above and beyond the right and the left parties. However, however, that being said, there is a lot of uh, precarity or poorness among young people. And this is still people that cannot pay the rent at the end of the month and they still have to pay the taxes and those taxes, a part of them, doesn't return. They stay within the royal family to maintain these castles, to maintain mm. the castles in Mallorca, in Madrid, right. no, in Asturias. So there are 42 million people in Spain, more or less. There are 7 million people in Catalonia. So you can re relate maybe, there is 8 million people in Bogota. So in Catalonia, there are some people, but, but so many people, right? given the territory. Some of these people, they approve being part of Spain, they approve being part of the monarchy, or not. There are variations. I want to be part of Spain, but not of the monarchy. I want to be part of Spain, but I would prefer not autonomous community, but a federation, that in Germany, no? a federal government and a republic, a república federal, or not. I, wa I want things to remain how they are. So there are a lot of positions, a lot of experience. People during the, um, the civil war, they lost, uh, they lost loved ones from both sides. We have to be fair and we have to say that even the people that were trying to free their, their families and their towns, they killed priests, they killed nuns, they burned churches unnecessarily sometimes. But we have also to say that the people from the army, from the right side, they were relentless. Mm. So this polarization is something that should be, you know, diminished over time and through dialogue, try to find answers. Um, and this is something very important for us who come from outside. Sometimes we can feel like they are asking, are you with me or against me? Mm. And we really, really do not have to position ourselves or to get involved in the conflict. Uh, violence, aggression, and exclusion and discrimination are not acceptable. Uh, 
other than that you can you know develop knowledge through the debate that's that's basically it i told you before that i think that they were morally right that uh, they have been working their land they have been saving money they pay a lot of tributes but they don't receive the same amount of tributes because of course when you're part of the team you can you have to help everybody you also benefited from the infrastructure that european union uh, made here or that the spanish government invested here so that's part of the of the deal let's say uh even so that i think they are morally right in defending their identity mm -hmm. defending their culture but not up to the point when this turns into a reason for exclusion mm -hmm. for nationalism that's that's the point where you say okay wait and you know take a deep breath and try to be more more up the other thing is that as i told you before there are big infrastructures the biggest sport in europe is in barcelona or just the the fact of being able to belong to the european union a country that wants to enter the european union um, needs the uh, unanimous vote of all of the countries to enter there are some countries that want to enter right now and are waiting, they are in the queue. Mm. If you leave Spain, eventually, I don't think it will happen, but if it happens, they will probably not allow you to enter again to the European Union. Mm. The most important thing is to inform yourselves before getting an opinion. Mm -hmm. You can watch the documentaries, no? Las Dos Catalunyas, you can watch the videos in YouTube, you can read the history books, and once you, you've done that and you visit the region, then you can understand more or less the idiosyncrasy, the identitarian part of it, the economic part of it, and the political part of it, because there are three different things. So that's, that's the reason why. Nice. Yes. Yeah. I think one, one thing that I've learned through all of this is to dismiss the idea of purity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of these discourses, they go to purity. We are the pure Spaniards. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are the pure Catalonians. Yeah. And it turns out that, you know, the food, no? The scanelones. Yeah. They come from Italy. And, um, I don't know, one of the basic uh, ingredients for the food, the tomato, it comes from the Americas, right. actually. It didn't exist before. <laughs> what will be Italy, no? Without the tomatoes, yeah. Yeah. for instance. Also. Yes, but also we in Colombia, we received the coffee from Africa. It didn't exist in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is, we are a mix. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a mix of cultures, of traditions, of, and the idea is to generate a dialogue instead of, of building up a wall. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's the whole point of it, mm -hmm. I yeah. think. That's what we are doing today. Actually.